Friends podcast episode number 40. Today we have Lachlan, who is one of the best boundary umpires in the AFL. How's it going, mate? Thanks, Jerry. Uh, well, what an intro. Uh, thanks for having me. Um, going very well, as we're sort of just discussing. Got a pretty easy night uh, tonight when we're uh, recording this one. I um, am umpiring tomorrow night, um, Friday night, uh, uh, St Kilda versus Geelong. So got a pretty cruisy night here, just sort of chilling at home, um, uh, dinner and actually got a got a meeting on zoom a little bit later so a um, bit of a relaxing night a few things on but um no very very happy to be talking to you oh that's really good mate appreciate it so the topics we'll be covering are obviously umpiring because lock does boundary umpiring i'm a field umpire we'll talk about athletics because we both love our running obviously talk about media because that's a topic i like really am interested in pursuing down the line which you, i hope could give a few tips for me um, and some funny stories. So let's get started, mate. So hypotheticals is the main um, thing we kick off with. So if you could meet one artist, who would it be and why? Yeah, so um, <laughs> I have to think about this a bit. Um, look, I I mean, I, I like music. It's not something that I sort of am listening to all the time. However, probably someone like Ed Sheeran would probably be my, um, someone I'd really like to meet. Um, Obviously, pretty cool bloke, um, pretty dominant in the in the music world, um, but seems like a pretty sort of down to earth. Seems to have his head switched on, pretty pretty responsible and whatnot. So no, if I had to meet someone, um, I probably can't explain much more than him. He's, I haven't been to too many concerts, but I have been to see him when he was at uh, uh, Marvel Stadium a, a few years ago when we could go to concerts and things like that so um yeah if i got to meet anyone um definitely don't mind an ed sheeran song and um would definitely have sit down and have a have a meal that's really good mate are there any other artists you follow or types or just like songs that are your favorites like could you name a few yeah well i guess probably if you look through my playlist it's probably um Oh, I like your Blink 182, Simple Plans, Green Day, um, oh. probably a bit of the music I listened to growing up. So that's probably the genre that I stick to. I don't know what it would be, punk punk rock um, type setup. Um, so yeah, they're probably probably the main. Um, the script, um, trying to think of them off the top of my head. I, I'm more of, I, I um, almost just listen to podcasts now, but um, yeah, whenever yeah. I get the the playlists out there, the kind of songs I sort of listen to if I'm not just listening to your normal sort of mainstream uh, radio. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I, Sum 41, Nickelback, not too bad. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of it. Uh, Jet, um, so yeah, the kind of that, that genre. Um, uh, people that are probably a fan of that probably would name most of the same bands, Red Hot Chili Peppers, et cetera. That's really good, mate. Um, so what podcast do you listen to? Um, bit of a mix. Um, your podcast, of course. <laughs> um, a few of the inside running ones. Um, well, yeah. the inside running podcast. So I, I do try and listen to the athletics ones um, when I can with the work that I do in athletics. Um, but um, uh, uh, and um, some Formula One ones pretty big fan of formula one so there's um, one called um wtf1 um their name is so i listen to them pretty religiously um formula one themselves have a few um the australian grand prix and probably the other one that i listen to um you might be a fan um in media it's called the sounding board um it's run by craig hutchinson and um damian barrett um so two uh, well, Damien's a AFL journalist and Craig Hutchinson owns um, SEN. Um, so that's a pretty good one if you're interested in the media sort of landscape. Um, and the other one's called Victory, the podcast. I don't know if you've heard of Entourage, the TV show, um, but Victory, the podcast is a podcast with Doug Allen, um, who's the creator of that show. And a few of the, um, the um, two of the, four stars, I guess, Kevin Dillon and Kevin Connolly, who play E and drama on the show. So they're probably the regular podcasts that I listen to. I do every now and come uh, every now and then come across a podcast that I do 
um, enjoy, but I might listen to one episode here or there, but they're probably the main ones that I'm subscribed to and will try and listen to most um, as they as they go live. Yeah, it's really good, like, because you have a mix of um, podcasts you listen to as well as music, so it's good to have a wide variety. Um, talk about running and also AFL, different types of genres as well. So that's good. Yeah. I really feel like with podcasts, you kind of have to, I don't know for you, but you really have to be in a bit of a mood to, to listen to a podcast. Sometimes you get in the car and just want to listen to music. Other times you can yeah, exactly. sort of smash through a few podcasts. When I'm in the office at work, sometimes I'll listen to a, a couple of podcasts. It seems to be a pretty good environment to do that. Um, pretty easy, easy listening to when you can't really listen to music in the office, but podcasts you seem to be able to get away with and without ignoring colleagues next to you. <laughs> um, but yeah, so yeah, no, those are kind of the ones I listen to at the moment. So, um, but happy to, there was another one, um, the, the Entourage, the Victory, the podcast one follows briefly, like they'll, they'll do episode by episode. So they'll talk about this sort of behind the scenes of the show. Um, so that went for eight seasons, I think. Um, there's a Scrubs one. I'm not sure if you've heard of the TV show um, Scrubs, but it's a pretty old show now. But um, same concept with two of the main actors on that sort of come together and go through the behind the scenes of. So I kind of have that one there. I sort of that's quite long. The sort of hour and a half podcasts are tough for me to listen to. It's tough to go into them <laughs> knowing that they're going to take up that much time. But um, yeah, if I if I sit down, I'll. Um, uh, and have time some of those i'll um have a listen to but yeah no um it's a relatively new form of me oh, sorry it's a relatively old form of media that's taken a very um big leap um forward in the last few years so um which has been good yeah cool so tell us about your experiences with athletics because you've got an impressive pb of um 153 for 800 i believe and sub nine minutes for the mile so obviously running for Essen Athletics as well. What's um how does that work? Like how'd you get into athletics in the first place, I guess? Yeah, so um I started athletics down at uh, a local little athletic center. So Kilo Little Athletics when I was five. So I started straight away, whole family sort of signed up. So um uh, yeah, so ran down there from under sixes, I guess, through to under sixteens. Um there was probably a brief sort of time when I was doing both littles and senior acts. And then, yeah, I've been doing seniors um, since um, sort of when I sort of started doing AFL umpiring um, at the 2016 was my first year at senior level. Um, I kind of um, sort of put athletics a bit on the back step um, and focused a bit more on umpiring, but I mean, I'm still there, still a registered member. Um, so I'll, I'll get out and run when I can, but um, sort of umpiring and probably actually probably more so uh, um, the live streaming stuff that I do um, through athletics exclusive is uh, probably takes precedence on um, what I would normally would normally be racing or sort of the milers club and those kinds of specialist meets would be my normal go-to with with athletics but I um, yeah due to live streaming it sort of I can't really do both it's I've tried a few times and it's pretty hard so um, I, I do like athletics so I still train pretty regularly um, for uh, for to try and stay fit but to obviously it assists with the boundary umpiring that I do um, but look I went up to Falls Creek over the last um, uh, new year period and sort of got pretty fit there so yeah I do try to still try and stay involved but I pretty I understand it's probably um umpiring is probably my main main um go at the moment so I do athletics mainly because I I do enjoy it and I'm sort of will always be around those circles but any serious racing I don't think I'll be ticking off any pbs <laughs> anytime soon I don't even know when that that 800 pb was from a long time ago I'd suggest so yeah. um yeah, it's it's more just for the enjoyment and being around the 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 training group and then the at the events. Oh, that's really good, mate. And I want to learn more about like your journey through communications and marketing because um as you know that's the topic I'm kind of interested in pursuing in a few years' time. Do you want to give us a brief overview on how that works? Yeah. Um so I do um got a role with Little Athletics Victoria um doing communications and marketing so i came from a uh business information systems 
um, background. So that's what I studied at university. Um, didn't like it. I uh, didn't like it very much. Um, that so, but I, um, yeah, fortunately got a role um, at Little Athletics where I could um, uh, do digital digital media kind of stuff. It really helped the the IT background that I came in with. Um, obviously, having um, a, a sporting background um, in athletics, um, no doubt helped help that role. But I was really fortunate in terms of I was able to. Um, I was given the opportunity to really explore and experiment with um, that aspect from a digital point of view. So um, the, the growth in which from a, say a digital marketing point of view, so being able to spend quite a bit of money on digital advertising and, um, and obviously the live streaming, Little Athletics Victoria invested quite a bit in the live streaming. Um, but I was given the flexibility to do a lot of that stuff. So um, without without the the permission, I guess the or the freedom to explore and test, and um, I, I probably wouldn't have been able to get to where I I guess I've gotten to today. Um, they have played a big role. Um, unfortunately, when I record this, it's my second last day of working at Little Athletics Victoria. I got a role um, in the digital team. Uh, for the Australian Grand Prix Corporation. So we'll be starting that on uh, Monday. Um, but yeah, today, uh, sorry, tomorrow, Friday will be my final day at Little Ass. But five and a half years I spent there and yeah, definitely has um, been a yeah a fantastic opportunity and really got me started. As I mentioned, I studied business information systems and that would have taken me down a, a, a like a business analyst role in a, in a, in a um, company. But um, Little Athletics definitely set me on the, the um the career path of staying in digital media um and sports is um something i really enjoy so i would like to stay in sports as long as possible if if it allows me to so yeah that that's been a really good now so um do you want to give us an overview of random media um how that works to improve online presence yeah, so I guess Rainer Media was created a little while ago now. Um, I started um, largely, it was um, uh, it, it was started because I was um, being asked to create websites um, and online um, uh, social accounts and all that kind of thing for um, uh, more than just family and friends. Um, so I was sort of building them for, um, like I built it for my little athletic center that I was a part of and a few football clubs, et cetera. And then I started to, um, they would obviously pass on contact details to other people. So I bought them for physio, oh, sorry, I built websites and stuff for physios. Um, so that's kind of where that was, um, that became um, or started. Um, I couldn't just keep doing it sort of just uh, friends sort of on the side kind of thing. So yeah, I did build that business, which has transformed quite a bit into um, uh, doing video work for people, podcasts, um, a whole bunch of um, different media aspects. Um, but largely that's the, that, that's the business that runs Athletics Exclusive. Um, so um, Athletics Ex Exclusive is just the brand. The, the business that sits behind that is um, Rona Media. Um, so obviously we um, get paid and, um, to, to do events and um, we obviously pay the contractors in terms of the, the commentators and the camera operators. So um, because there's a little bit of money going through now, that all goes through Athletics Exclusive. So it's sort of taken, it's, it's more or less just a, a business there to um, fulfill all those, the, the, the requirements, all the boring stuff <laughs> um, that you have to do um, to make sure that it's all sort of above board. So kind of what it is at the moment, it's sort of, it's, um, yeah, it's whatever people ask me to do from a, from a media in a digital world. Um, uh, it all goes under that brain, that brain and media banner. So, um, largely at the moment, it's all everything that goes through athletics exclusive is probably the large driver of it, but it has taken different shapes and forms. So sometimes I'll, I'll build quite a few websites for people. Um, other time I'll help with digital marketing in, through say Facebook and Google ads. Um, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, as I mentioned, tradition the last few years, athletics exclusive has definitely been the, the main driver of, um, that business. Yeah, that's really good because like all the milers races I do, basically, you kind of play a part in that as well, like the footage and all that. So no, that's really interesting. All right. So next question, or um... yeah, of course. Um, and it's also the um, 
I think you might touch on it. You've, you seem to have done your research, but a lot of the, um, the gaming stuff as well. So, um, but I'll, I'll sort of wait until those questions come up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all good, mate. So the next one is the quote of a podcast. So push yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. Um, like, is there a quote or something you live by, mate? Um, hmm, a quote. This is going to sound really odd because I'm pretty sure I've made it up. Yeah. But there was a hill <laughs> uh, and I wouldn't say it's necessarily a quote, but it's a, I think it's a, it's a, a mantra that I lived by for a long time. And I used to, um, where we trained down at uh, Aberfeldy um, in Essendon in Victoria here, um, we have like a 1K loop that we do and sort of at the opposite side. So there's sort of halfway point, there's a, there's a bit of a hill and it's quite a, it's got quite a steep incline. Oh, um, but the hardest part of the hill is the, the, the next um, sort of hundred meters where it's a much less of an incline, but it still goes up. And that's the hardest part because everyone works really hard um, uh, up the original part of the hill, but it's um, you can sort of storm away and get away from people um, over the, the, the next part. So um, I kind of live by the, the mantra and, um, about it's not how hard you work up the hill, it's how hard you work over it. Um, so I think that's a kind of a quote, is it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, a, it's not how hard you kind of um, the uh, you work in the really tough situations. It's um, they're going to happen for everyone. It's how you um, hard you work to sort of get out of that and work to improve. So I, I think that's kind of what it means. And it's always I've always got this hill in my head. So I've I've run around this one k loop thousands upon thousands of times and whenever i go up it it's all i always think of that and it's uh, everyone goes through their challenging situations um uh which is fine everyone goes through those but uh, the sort of real telling of an individual is um what you do after those tough situations um because yeah they can either get harder um or you can sort of work work hard and sort of manage and get over those um those challenges so that's kind of what i probably live by um i hope that kind of answers your question yeah for sure mate so is the hill the one behind the athletics track i believe yeah, yeah. um yes yeah. Yeah, yeah um it's on the far far end so there's quite a few hills around <laughs> yeah there's quite a few. but um yeah so there's a there's a really big loop that's about i don't know two two a little over 2k and then there's a smaller 1k um, which is sort of sits right next to the athletics track. Um, so, um, yeah, either hill will do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good, mate. So we'll talk more about um, books and movies now. So what's the last book or movie you've read or seen, mate? Um, I don't know the last book. It will come to me. Um, the last movie, this is going to sound really odd because I was watching it last night and I don't know why, yeah. but I was watching Eurovision, um, the movie, yeah. just for a bit of, every now and then when I just, uh, I don't know, want a bit of light entertainment, <laughs> I go back to shows <laughs> that I've watched. It. And for some reason, I watched Eurovision on Netflix. Um, I'll break your rules a bit because the last proper TV show that I watched um, yeah. was uh, uh, Shadow and Bone um, mm. on on Netflix. I don't know if you've seen it, but they're a bit of a, um, I don't know, a magic, magic meets human, um, type, type TV show. So anything on sort of Netflix, I'll, I'll try and, um, have a watch. Um, I think there's a few Tom Clancy movies on prime Amazon prime that I've sort of teed up that I want to watch. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I sort of jump around genres quite a bit, but they're probably the main ones that I've I've watched at the moment. Um, in terms of books, I can't remember the last time I read a book, to be honest, which is really bad. Probably back in year 12. Oh. I have every intention. I'll probably read a few little bits of um, uh, a few uh, pages of books every now and then. But yeah, definitely no, no, um, um, I haven't finished a book since, yeah, as I said, probably year 12, which is probably really bad, but just not my, my style. Um, I've read Harry Potter, the whole series, about eight times over. Um, oh, that's good. So if you put a Harry Potter book in front of me, I'll, I'll probably be able to get through it. Um, but, yeah, no, um, yeah, probably a bit embarrassing. Don't read, everyone. <laughs> Reading's good for you. <laughs> oh, that's all right, mate. All good. <laughs> all right, so the next segment is the money segment. Um, 
So basically, are there any funny stories either from primary school, high school, boundary umpiring, or your media ventures that you want to share to the listeners out there? Um, yeah, why not? I'll give it a go. Now, I'm not a funny bloke, so got yeah. a few funny friends. But so I was thinking, I'm like, how can I, after listening to some of your podcasts and seeing the stories, I'm like far out, what's the, what? What funny story? And the only thing I could think about is recently now, I've got to be careful because I don't want to talk too much about um, the umpiring other than my own experience. Yeah, yeah. As you would be well aware, we, we do get quite a bit of feedback um, from the crowd. Um, us being on the boundary, we are pretty close to um, the crowd at a lot of stages. Fortunately, we run a lot, so we're not really ever in the, in the, in the same space um, too often. But I was... Uh, they're all the creative things for the most part it's pretty harmless some people do yell out some pretty bad things every now and then but for the most part it's just a bit of fun and a bit of banter between uh, the crowd and they like to we don't we most of the time we don't respond if someone's being really um, persistent we'll, we might give them a thumbs up or something just to acknowledge that we're here <laughs> we're hearing them um, a lot of them tend to give me uh, uh, I might be losing a bit of the hair on the, the back of my head. So a lot of them <laughs> do give me a bit of feedback about that uh, more recently. So um, that's, that's there. But uh, a few weeks ago, I was down in Hobart um, uh, with a I'm trying to think of who was playing Melbourne, North Melbourne yeah. um, a few weeks ago. And I was, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Blundstone arena, but once one side of the oval is a grandstand and the other side is sort of a grass hill. Oh, yeah, um, and then right. at behind one of the goals is function rooms. Um, so people can get from the grandstands to the, the hill um, through the, or um, just below these, these uh, function rooms, but it's almost like just a, a footpath width. So it's not, it's only standing room. There's not a lot of people there. So it's pretty quiet when you're standing at the, say the behind post and you're, um, you're pretty close to the people and there's only a few, people there so you can hear them unlike when you're at sort of the uh, marvel or mcg where yeah. there's a lot of people and sort of everything gets mixed in um but yeah so we're down at hobart and i was i was next to the post up this end and there's a few uh a few happy um crowd members uh behind generally giving it to uh not only us but the players as well as they do the opposition players um all, all harmless all a bit of fun um, but I was, I was standing there and I was standing just off the post. So the ball was pretty close to our side um, uh, within the 50 and I was standing off the post and these guys are yelling out and they're doing all the random things. Oh, boundary umpire, you're losing your hair, baldy, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, so I wasn't giving him much and <laughs> laughing to myself, but trying to concentrate on the game as well. And I was, I was right in front, I must've been right in front of their, um, uh, their, um, their viewing to this, uh, to the, uh, it might have been a ball up or so. And they're like, hey, boundary umpire, get out of the way. So <laughs> I'm like, here we go. Uh, so I ignored it. And he's like, oh, boundary, get out of the way. So I took a bit of a step to the, uh, to the uh, right, I think it was, so close to the post. And they're all up cheering. And it's pretty quiet up the end. So uh, we try and be at a bit of fun, but I had a bit of a giggle to myself um, <laughs> when, it, when it was happening. So um, that's always, uh, for the most part, we, you obviously see a lot of the stuff in the, the media and online, and it's not overly friendly all the time. But most of the time when we're down at the games, it's all a bit of fun with the, with the crowd and they're all all there in um, good fun. So um, there are a few of the experiences. Um, uh, they're, they're more, more a bit of fun than, um, than, than the negative stuff, which is good. Um, especially when friends are yelling out to you uh, when you're about <laughs> to throw the ball in and you're sort of, it, it's probably more embarrassing for them than it is for me. I'm sure most of the people in the crowd are like, what, who's, who's Lachlan that they're yelling out at. Um, but um, we definitely hear it all and uh, a few cousins and stuff. So they're always a bit of fun. And yeah, whatever the crowd comes up with um, is always a bit of a laugh. So um, yeah, I don't know if that's a super funny story, but um, it was funny at the time. Um, and when it's in a, can be in a pretty serious situation, the little comments like that um, do, do, um, uh, uh, are really why I guess you enjoy the sport um, that, that we're able to be a part of because yeah, you can, although, um, there's, oh, it's obviously very serious, but you can have a bit of fun. And for the most part, I, I think the crowd and the umpires and the players do try and show that when they can. Yeah, exactly right. When I was field umpiring the other day, um, 
so a few kids are like kicking in danger, but then there were no hands like at, on the ground. I'm like, no one put their hand down, and we all just had a giggle. So it was pretty funny. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah no, that's it. good. So yeah, yeah. All right, let's dive a bit deep into your umpiring journey. So I believe you've umpired over a hundred AFL matches. Um, is that correct me if I'm wrong? Is that yeah? So hundred and eight, hundred and nine, or so. I think oh, from yeah. there. So. Um, we keep a bit of a running tally of it. I, I know I did my 100th pretty late last year. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, just just over the 100. So, it goes very quick. Yeah. Can you tell me how, like, a week in umpiring works for you in terms of, like, training, um, what you're about to do in an hour, like, the meetings? Um, yeah, and how you, um, the pathway works and stuff like that. Yeah, of course. So, I started umpiring in the Essendon District um, football league. I believe I was 12 um, when I started. So 12 or 13 and started just as a bit of pocket money. I knew a few friends that had, uh, were field umpires or boundary umpires um, in the league. Uh, so I, I started that with my older brother and yeah, it kind of went from there. I was doing running distance running and I was um, yeah, it was an easy way to get money, which I think is why a lot of the um, kids do start, umpiring these days which is fantastic so yeah I started down that path and um, I stayed there um, about seven seasons I believe so it was 20 or 21 when I um, got promoted up to uh, the VFL panel um, so basically how that works is at, uh, when you um, finish at a certain ranking I guess so you're sort of you, you know, are doing your A grade matches so I think it's called premier division at the moment but it was sort of division one um, competition um, when I was there. So I did that grand final, um, I think the last couple of years. Um, but yeah, I got put up um, when I was yeah 20 or 21 um, to go and trial for a VFL um, spot. Um, so in Victoria, the VFL competition um, at the time covered the VFL seniors, VFL reserves and uh, TAC Cup. So the under 18s competition. Wow. Um, so I got put on that list um, I think 2012, um, where I uh, did one year of TAC Cup um, before getting promoted internally to the VFL senior panel, um, where I did three more years of uh, the um, VFL seniors. So largely I was in VFL seniors. You would occasionally drop back to just do sort of VFL reserves games. But um, yeah, we did do senior games most of the time. Um, in my first year on that panel, I got all the way through to prelims in the senior competition. So um, I got pretty far. Um, and then the following year, I um, did the TAC Cup Grand Final, which is sort of the second highest game that you could do at, at that time. Um, so I think there were four in each. So, uh, yeah, I was between the fifth and eighth umpire at a VFL level. Um in my second year, so third year on the VFL squad, but second year on the VFL seniors. And then the third year and my final year at VFL, um, uh, I did the VFL senior grand final and finished um, in the number one position. Um, so no guarantees you get an AFL spot, but um, I was pretty fortunate to get a spot quite late in the piece. So basically um, there's only limited spots on the AFL list as you probably be aware. Yeah. So in Victoria, there's 23 boundary umpires um, on the spot. And um, so, I mean, I, I put, I guess I put myself in the best position to try and grab, grab that spot. However, I did either, uh, I needed a spot to open up. So I went through whenever our season finished in say September, October, November, December, no calls, no nothing. <laughs> January, no calls, no nothing. It, was, it wasn't looking very good. So I actually went back to VFL training for one night um, uh, and, yeah, didn't think I got a spot in 2016. Um, so it was a bit of a shame. Um, but um, I guess fortunately for me, but uh, a spot opened up. So one of the AFL boundary umpires in Victoria, I think got a promotion um, on their, in their day job that required commitments that would have clashed with their umpiring. So they had to retire uh, the first week back of AFL preseason training. So, and I was still number one boundary umpire from the year before. So I got a call up, I think it was Jan 16th, 2016 uh, to be given that spot. So I was straight back into it. I didn't have to wait too long, which is, I guess, a good thing. I got the call on a, I don't know what day it was, Saturday or Sunday. And I was at training on, 
on a Sunday. So that's kind of the pathway. And then, yeah, I've been, I believe I've done five years. So I'm in my sixth year now of AFL. Yeah, so 100 games. Um, and it's the same process really is you sort of, we're sort of observed every game um, like we would be at sort of um, local league and then through VFL and you're sort of positioned um, throughout throughout the season. Um, I've done, been fortunate last, or not last year, the year before I did a my first final and got through to a semi. So I did two finals and then last year I did one final as well. So this year I'll be, um, fingers crossed, I guess you sort of start again and you got to try and see how you go. So hopefully one day we'll make that that next step up to doing a prelim. But yeah, as you as there's 43 boundary umpires across the country. So um, unlike field umpires in um, AFL who are all situated in Victoria. So field umpires move to Victoria if they're promoted from other states. Um, boundary umpires and goal umpires have panels in all the other states. So um, the, the Victorians cover the five games. However, there's a panel of five boundary umpires in Queensland, New South Wales, South Australia and Western Australia. So we don't often do those games um, unless injury or sickness um, requires people to fly around. Um, so um, of the 43 boundary umpires, 16, I think my maths is correct, do the, do the first week of finals where they've got the four games and then it goes uh, 12, 12 and, um, oh no, not 12. I'm completely stuffed up. Sorry, it goes 16 to eight because there's two games in semifinals rounds, then oh, to yeah. eight in prelim and then to four um, in the grand final. So um, uh, I sort of, yeah, I guess I got to that top sort of eight in that second um, year, but just didn't make it um, last year. So it's pretty cutthroat, um, but I obviously want the the top guys of the, the season and whoever's run really well um, gets put through. So um, it's pretty I guess it's pretty standard in terms of that's how it would work at local league and seniors. So it works exactly the same at, at AFL level. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of the progression. Oh, that's really interesting, mate. Um, if I want to continue this umpiring pathway, I probably should head to training a bit more, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty- yeah, no, it's definitely a, um, I definitely encourage, uh, I, I remember doing it as a kid and um, it's probably the first real experience um, that we had, you have, you take in a little bit of a leadership role. Now I'd never did field umpiring. So I never did juniors or anything like that. I just stuck yeah. mainly to the boundary umpiring. Um, but it was, um, the, the experiences that you get and the, the, um, skills and the knowledge and all that kind of stuff is really valuable and definitely something that, um, I think people can take into, um, their future careers in terms of, uh, yeah, how to handle conflict, how to, um, how to sort of, even just talking to adults, we obviously, there's obviously a lot of adults that do umpiring. You've got to work yeah, exactly. together. Um, even as a 13 year old that I was, um, when I started a 12 year old, you've got to sort of be able to communicate. So a lot of those skills, you don't get them in, um, at that age, definitely not, um, anywhere else. So, um, they're definitely skills and yeah, I, I never did umpiring with any intentions really to become an AFL umpire it was only sort of, a year or two into the VFL that I sort of was, was starting to get told that if I sort of um, really gave it a big crack that I could potentially make an AFL spot, I was still pretty keen on um, pursuing a, a running career. Um, but it was only, mm-hmm. yeah, it was yeah midway through the, the um, 2014, 2013, when I sort of really switched the focus from running um, until uh, to boundary umpiring. Oh, good stuff, mate. It's really good because hopefully um, I need to attend training more just to improve like um, obviously the fundamentals and um, yeah, just like try and get a final spot as well because it's obviously important to train and learn new things, meet new people. But let's talk. Yeah, um, so we just had AFL community um, round um, a few, uh, last round or, and the last two rounds and we went out to uh, community. So I went out to uh, Melton, so Riddle, uh, the Riddle League and it's good to see all the the kids or the umpires as well um, out there. And yeah, we had the opportunity to go down and give a few tips. So um, yeah, I, I'm not sure if you were down there in the last few weeks and got AFL umpires, but I'm pretty sure we spread out across the board. So um, yeah, that's always something that we really enjoy doing. Yeah. Cause I'm playing the WRFL, I think a few weeks ago an AFL player came down, I'm oh, sorry, umpire came down to our training. So no, that was good. Yeah. 
Um, so describe traveling to the US and New Zealand and your other overseas ventures. Um, what are like some places you recommend for me to check out down the road? Yeah, so um, when I went to the US uh, in uh, 2018, it would have been, um, that was my first time overseas. So I'd never been overseas before then. So I was, yeah, 23 <laughs> maybe. Um, I probably should have done the research on this, but yeah, a few years ago. Uh, so that was my first time. It was We spent six weeks there. So I went with my best mate from school um, and we traveled around for a long time. So did the... Uh, west coast first so um, did all your your LA's and your um, San Francisco and uh, Las Vegas etc before flying over to the east coast and doing your Washington's and your Boston's and your uh, Florida's etc so uh, that was a really eye-opening experience um, the the states the the places that I thought I'd like the most I like the least and the places I thought I would it would be a bit boring I liked the most um so like I thought I would love Los Angeles um it's probably the the Hollywood aspect and I really didn't like it um but places like um Las Vegas uh now I don't I don't drink um so I thought Las Vegas is probably not going to be the place for me (laughs) um but I really liked it. I mean, we were only there for a short time and we did some pretty cool stuff. So we did a um, helicopter ride um, on Christmas day. We are actually there um, over to the Grand Canyon. Um, so, and we got to explore the Grand Canyon and um, we did um, Circus Delay. Um, we saw a show, um, which was fantastic. Um, the most amazing thing you ever see where the ground picks up and flips <laughs> around and incredible um and then just exploring the place um it was really family i I didn't think say a place like las vegas was going to be family friendly but there were more parents and kids than um uh in there than probably any other place so um that was really surprising and then yeah places like say boston or um which are pretty sort of i guess quieter cities um but, but were a lot of fun um places like anaheim in la um, or california um were, were really nice but you're kind of only there for disney land um, <laughs> disney worlds in florida yeah. um so look those those places were pretty cool um but yeah it was interesting that um that uh the places yeah i thought i'd like uh, but I, I do think and sp- after speaking to people if i did go back to um, the US, I'd stay away or I wouldn't spend as much time in the cities. I think you kind of um, get a different perspective. Um, living in a city is a little bit different. I don't know if I'd love living in Melbourne or Sydney, to be honest. I'd, I'd prefer probably the um, the suburbs. They're, they're a bit more interesting, a bit more clean and uh, um, that. So we went out to um, Joshua Tree, um, which is... I'm trying to think where I where I'm going. In oh yeah, between we between LA and Anaheim, I believe it was. Um, so in California, um, but yeah, sort of it's a three hour drive away. Um, Palm Springs, those places were really cool. So if I went back to America, I'd probably uh, go out of the cities a little bit more and try and explore uh, those other areas. So um, yeah, that, that's probably what I'd do in. The US, but it was a really good trip. But yeah, it's first time, as I said, it was first time overseas. Um, so yeah, that was really good. And then yeah, I went to New Zealand for my brother actually got married in New Zealand. Um, so that's why we we went there and made a bit of a holiday out of it. Um, yeah, amazing place. It will definitely be a sort of a regular, given how close it is um, to uh, to Australia. It will definitely be a regular trip. Um, I actually went back. I actually had a I live streamed. Uh, the Steigen spectacular, the Geelong meet yeah. in between. So I went up for the wedding, flew back for the Steigen for, I think I was back for two days and then flew back to New Zealand. So um, given it was so close and relatively cheap, um, yeah, I was able to do that. So, um, but yeah, we, um, the, the, we, the wedding was on the South Island. Um, so yeah, that, that was, um, yeah, stunning, amazing, amazing backdrops and definitely can do, do more with that. Um, with with umpiring, we're obviously um, uh, busy during the winter period here in Australia, which is probably a lot of the time when Australians go overseas to get out of the weather. Um, so we can kind of only go overseas um, 
unless we want to give a year off umpiring, um, et cetera, which at the moment I don't um, outside of the football season. So sort of your October's through to early January. So we kind of try and pick some places that's not going to be too cold. <laughs> I don't really want to do a year of winter, to be honest. Um, so yeah, New Zealand fit in really well. So yeah, we um, that was a family holiday. So I stayed there with the family um, in New Zealand. But yeah, we explored all over. So yeah, started on the South Island and went up through the through the North Island. So I'm not sure if you've been there, but yeah, definitely, definitely worth it. Um, yeah. And given how close it is, it's a, it's a pretty relaxing, very similar to Australia, but um, yeah, some, the, the, the explore, um, the exploration stuff that you can do is, yeah, it's anyone that likes a sort of outdoor activity lifestyle. Um, yeah. New Zealand is definitely a place. Yeah. Um, yeah. I recommend. So yeah, that was fantastic. Um, we had, well, I actually had planned that, um, to go to Japan um, with an umpiring friend of mine uh, last year during COVID. So we organized it right early at, you know, in January, February. That obviously didn't happen due to COVID. <laughs> yeah. So um, we were actually going to for the Formula One. So a friend and I were a uh, big Formula One fans. So we we're going to go to the Formula One um, in Japan in October. Um, yeah. That didn't go ahead but that's the next planned trip so it's probably not going to go ahead this year either <laughs> so it might be a 2022 2022 thing so yeah i'd love to do um yeah some of those places japan singapore um are probably next on the next on the list and i'm sure yeah as i said there's probably a few few um new zealand trips in there and um and then potentially do your europe's so did the did the big American trip for six weeks. The next big Europe trip when I can afford it will be, yeah, will be the next big thing. And then, yeah, maybe a few of these smaller, cheaper ones where you stay for a week or so um, scattered around. But yeah, uh, yeah, before America, I hadn't gone overseas at all. So have explored all of Australia, um, <laughs> at least all of the States, but yeah, never, never overseas until then. But yeah, really good experience. Definitely an eye opener, but um, I've stayed in, <laughs> I've stayed in pretty much English, speaking countries um at the moment so yeah when we go to um countries that um obviously english isn't um first language um they will be i guess a bit more of a uh, a culture um uh shock or lesson or yeah so that they will be exciting to do those but yeah we we're looking forward to japan unfortunately it didn't go ahead and i didn't get the china i never did the china game um for umpiring so i'm not sure if that's coming back or not but um if it does, I'll be putting my hand up for it. But yeah, no, I didn't get that one, unfortunately. So that would have been a bit of fun doing that for, for work. Yeah, for sure. So now we're going to move on to quick hands now. So five quick questions. We're going to kick off with pineapple and pizza. Yes or no, Lucky? Yes. Yep. Yes, I love our wine. So, yep. Yep, beautiful. Um, English or maths? Maths. Yep. Uh, favorite footy team? Melbourne Storm. Melbourne Storm. <laughs> yeah, I know you can't say. It, yeah. For obvious reasons, I'm not going to say an AFL team. Yeah, fair enough. Um, favorite place to visit in Melbourne? Oh, ah, uh, in Melbourne or in Victoria? Oh yeah, we well, it brought it out. Yeah, Victoria, go for it. Oh, uh, Bright. Oh, we grew yeah. up holidaying in Bright, um, so I'm going to go there. Yep. Um, and common phrases you use in day to day. Oh, lovely. Lovely. Interesting. I don't know why I say that. I think one of my friends says that a lot. And over the yeah. last few years, it's not really a phrase, but it's a word, but I say it yeah, far yeah, too no. much and I don't know why. Got you. It happens to me all the time. Um, also, uh, let's go rewind. So when you were 16 years old, so my age, um, what were you doing like with sports, obviously umpiring um, in like school subjects, stuff like that? Uh, when we're 16, are we in year 11? Uh, yep, year 11, yep. yep. Uh, so I was at St. Bernard's College um, oh. in Essendon. Um, a, I was a swimming teacher, instructor at Paul Sadler Swimland. Um, I was doing running and I would have been umpiring with the Essendon District Football League. Um, it was probably a time when I was much better at running in comparison to, say, my age group. Um, so I was probably pretty fortunate to do a few nationals and et cetera. So I was probably in the prime of that. Um, but, yeah, they, they were – I gave up football when I was about 12. So, yeah, definitely wasn't playing footy anymore. But, yeah, they were the, they were the sports I was doing. 
That's really good. Um, in terms of subjects, I think just I'd probably IT focused IT and um, I didn't do any three fours in year 11. So I was only doing uh, your year 11 subjects, your one, two. So um, yeah, just your standards, English, maths, is, um, I think business, PE and IT would have been sort of a pretty standard um, selection for me. Yeah, good stuff. All right, let's move on to your gaming channel quickly. Dive through that. You found um, it. Yeah, found it, mate. So a few games you play are Formula One, PUBG. Talk us through that, mate. Yeah, so um, no one knows because I probably have very rarely told anyone. But <laughs> what we do with Athletics Exclusive live streaming is I actually base a lot of what we, um, how I uh, produce it based on um, streamers, so gaming streamers. Um, so the, I've been trying to adopt a lot of the, um, the interaction between a streamer and say the community and trying to see what we, um, what we can bring to an actual live stream to try and, I guess, promote them a little bit heavier. Um, a really big belief with um, the live stream, athletics live streaming, and I'm not avoiding your question, <laughs> but a very big thing of what we do with the, um, the, uh, my belief with the live stream is to... It needs to be different to a traditional broadcast. No one's watching TV or anything like that anymore. And there's a reason for that. And I'm trying to, I guess, a big part of what led me to live streaming in particular is, um, is yeah, watching, watching streamers um, do their thing and how can a, um, a ninja or a um, PewDiePie or whatever whatever his name is, yeah. um, turn a turn their YouTube or Twitch on and um, have hundreds of thousands of people watching them and interacting all at one time um, from their from their from their homes is really fascinates me um, and I think it's something that we can well to be honest probably TV big broadcast media should be adopting themselves but um, I can only do it from what I do so um, that's kind of where that has led to um yeah i grew, grew up like probably most kids playing games and still do um when we have time so um yeah i had that i look the you can probably see on the channel there's probably two videos and they're probably in the space of about yeah. three weeks of one another <laughs> so it's not uh, not a super regular thing but the, the the reason why i yeah created that was to try and um yeah learn the ways of how uh how uh um someone can jump on and how they can uh, engage their audience so well, better than probably any any um, current broadcast media does. So I think we can learn a lot from from what kids or adults or do on these streaming platforms and how we can fit that in. I, I did it for a little athletics live stream. I haven't done it for athletics exclusive yet, but where you like turn on those subscript. I'm not sure if you're familiar with. Um, the oh, yeah. streamers or whatnot, but like I turned on in one of our um, one of our streams, like the subscription. So when people would subscribe, um, they would uh, like it would pop up on the screen and all that kind of thing. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I do try and encourage the commentators to talk back and forward with the people that are um, submitting comments through YouTube or Facebook. Um, so just little things like that. I want to try and integrate them um, as best as possible into the into the sport live streams because yeah, yeah. As I said, I think we can learn a lot from how they engage their audiences, probably better than any any form of media um, in the world. And yeah, it's a little bit more than just putting tweets up on screen, um, which is kind of <laughs> what your your big um, TV stations do at the moment, and that's kind of that's kind of their interaction with the crowd. But I think with a live streaming, we have the opportunity to, um, yeah, really talk back and forward. So if you've got any suggestions, definitely let me know, but that's kind of where that comes in. Um, and yeah, that's, that's a big influence of um, what we do with our live streaming is yeah. How can I, how can we get that engagement um, so that people are hanging around as long as possible on a live stream and not just sort of tuning in for a race, but tuning in because they, um, enjoy interacting and if if it means um someone will hang around a long time because mitch dyer or michael massini will read out their comment that they um uh, did through youtube or facebook then hey let's do more of it let's keep reading and so there's been little things um like trying to put up like polls and stuff like that during races um it does come down a little bit to resources we're pretty pretty slim in terms of um the crew that we bring to the events but yeah we we do try and work out a way to um 
do all these sort of initiatives that yeah largely are from gaming um streamers um and see how we can bring that into uh, a, a sports broadcast so that's kind of where that comes from um yeah so i oh, look i don't really do too much i play the occasional game with mates when when we've got time but yeah that's yeah cod PUBG, formula one etc fair enough all righty i've got but go subscribe to my youtube channel i think i've got 17 subscribers <laughs> Yeah, go check out um his YouTube channel. Will be in the show notes. Um, and pretty much so twenty twenty one. We're obviously pretty much halfway in. What are your top three goals? Um, heading towards the back end of twenty twenty one. Yeah, so as mentioned a little while ago, I'm starting a new job on Monday. So um, from a professional career point of view, um, that's going to be a pretty big goal of mine. So um. I, yeah, I'm taking on a role as a website coordinator is my official title, but with the Australian Grand Prix Corporation. Um, so they manage the um, MotoGP in Phillip Island um, in October and the, uh, uh, the Formula One um, traditionally in March, but this year will be in um, November. So um, yeah, big, big goal for this year is to really settle into that and really try and develop the, I guess, my nine to five job, my professional career. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's my, I guess my second full-time job now. So it's, but yeah, you're starting from scratch. So yeah, that, that's going to be a really big focus on mine, making sure, I guess we have a um, good first impression and really give that a really, um, good crack, um, to try and yeah, really, I guess, increase that. So that's probably from a professional career point of view, um, from an umpiring point of view, it's always, um, I guess, striving to be better, I guess the, the next game goal um we actually have to set uh we are asked to set goals at the start of every year and although i'm a pretty big believer in not setting sort of those um game type um like trying to do a prelim final or trying to do a grand final yeah. um because largely it's sort of out of your control um from a game point of view yeah it's definitely to make the next step but it's always to try and improve so we're we're basically ranked on our performances and the better i can do every game, the more likely I am to move up the list. So um, that's always a goal um, of mine with umpiring. So yeah, trying to, trying to um, yeah, take that next step. Um, so whether that be um, doing a semi-final again, or whether that, that just being the, our national coach um, tells me that I've um, had a more consistent year, whatever it is, um, that's, that's a, definitely a tick um, from an umpiring point of view. And then um, probably from a business point of view, um, Athletics Exclusive is um, continues to expand. We ventured a lot into the Victorian Athletic League uh, last year. So for the first time, so the pro running, um, uh, it was a bit of a, um, a condensed year this year due to COVID. A lot of the events that sort of happened pre uh, pre-Christmas in a normal track and field season all got pushed into um, the the sort of months between January and March. So we couldn't do as many events as um, we would have liked to. So it's going to be a, definitely a big year um, from a streaming point of view. We're also um, exploring the option of doing um, some road racing cross-country events. So um, um, you heard it here first, <laughs> anyone, but... Um, yeah, so we are exploring that venture to try and because athletics exclusive almost gets packed away and not talked about um, during the cross country season. I want to try true, and yeah. make sure that we can um, keep going throughout. So we'll try, we'll do a few test runs at maybe some um, some of my friends training long runs. Try and get on a scooter <laughs> and plug a GoPro in and film it and yeah. see how it works. But yeah, that's that's the big goal for athletics exclusive is trying to make sure that we stay in the the mines and. Um, stay relevant throughout the entire year and yeah it might it's probably going to start with road road events i'm not sure if i'll venture off road at the moment but um yeah we'll try and see if we can get a few road races streamed um uh, and then yeah obviously um if we have a hopefully a relatively normal um track and field season we can do quite a few val milers club little athletics athletics victoria um meets to try and cover as much as possible and i would love to do some field event um coverage so if any yeah. any uh people from a field event are doing any of their specialist meets want us to come down i'd love to venture into that that space as well because i i feel a bit guilty every now and then we um i, I love the distance running don't yeah. get me wrong but um yeah we we want to show the full track and field spectrum um 
So yeah, not neglect field um, uh, field field on boring field uh, field events. Oh, good mate. Um, and the final thing is, Lockie, you can ask me one question, mate. Nothing about the podcast. Okay, where do you see yourself? What do you, where do you see yourself in a professional career? Oh yeah, good question, mate. And what uh, and yeah. it's a it's a double joint question. Yeah, go for and it. what are you doing to achieve that? Um, so in five years time, my goal would probably be to study at Swinburne doing media and communications. I'm um, to hopefully get a job in like journalism or commentary, something along the lines of that, like sports media. Um, what I'm doing currently is I'm working relatively hard on my VC just to like get a good ATAR or solid enough to get into that course. Um, as well as taking part in like other leadership ventures, um, with like Western Bulldogs, North Melbourne, um, continuing the podcast just for like that experience as well um like building connections with um people who can potentially give you roles in that field down the line so yeah perfect i um when i um applied for this grand prix i actually applied for a role prior to this one and didn't get it and what i did after i didn't get it um was i went and wrote Formula One articles for, um, I'm not sure if you've heard of The Raw, um, which is a, oh, yeah. a sport yeah. website. So I went and wrote um, Formula One articles for those, um, them between that previous um, role that I applied for um, and this one that I applied for and subsequently have gotten. And that was a big part of the interview. And they um, they mentioned that they really enjoyed that that initiative to go and do that. So yeah, what you're doing here with the podcast and uh, and yeah, your ventures at those footy clubs um, definitely will go a long way to showing um, potential employers in the future that you're sort of willing to to do those things. And I do a bit in the media. So if there's ever anything you need help with or want to come down and watch the live stream or be involved in any of that, let me know because yeah, more than happy to help in any way or even with umpiring or um, let me know, but yeah, you're doing a really good thing. I've been trying to get podcasts up for ages and have never been able to get consistency. So well done. Um, but yeah, it's uh, um, yeah, really enjoyable and yeah, got a really good thing going for you. And if you keep these things up, uh, no doubt any employer will be happy to have you once you um, go through that the, the education cycle. Yeah, sounds good. Um, remember everyone, push yourself because no one else is going to do it for you. Lucky mate, it's been a pleasure. Um, thank you so much for sparing some time and best wishes for the rest of the footy season. Obviously, I'm not sure if you're gonna run cross country season, but if you do, good luck for that and um your media ventures. So. <laughs> Definitely not racing, but no, thank you very much. Yeah, no, we'll stick to the footy for now, <laughs> yeah, and maybe you. live streaming. <laughs> no, thanks for having me on. It's um yeah, it's been a pleasure. No worries, mate.